I'm with uh, Dr. Molly Morse, um, who is the CEO and actually the founder of Mango Materials, um, which is based on the west coast of the states in California, and you're a, um, and I think is uh, associated with Stanford University. Is that right? Yes. So our original intellectual property is licensed from Stanford University. So um, our technology was based off of some of my PhD work and some of our co-founders PhD work and we've licensed it from Stanford University. So just to explain that technology and it's uh, I think it must be unique but we're actually making a, a bioplastics a biodegradable uh, PHA out of methane. Exactly. So we take methane gas, and it can be any form of methane gas. We feed it to our bacteria and produce the biopolymer inside the cell walls. We harvest the polymer from the bacteria and produce PHA, polyhydroxyalkanoid. And as you say, where there's people, there's methane. So this is not rooted in any particular location. It could be literally anywhere in the world. Exactly. So we have an alternative feedstock. Methane is a gas that people don't realize how widespread it is. So it's probably at your local wastewater treatment plant or landfill, and there is a lot of it. Uh, it also uh, resolves that thorny old problem about what do we do with available arable land, although everybody knows less than 2% of that goes uh, to the bioplastics industry anyway. But it is not land-based, so that's another advantage. What about cost, though? Is it an expensive process? No, we're very focused on the low-cost production of bioplastics. So you might think that sugar is cheap or affordable, but actually on a gram per gram basis of carbon, methane is actually significantly more affordable. So by using methane gas, especially waste methane, although we can use pipeline methane, we can significantly drop the cost of bioplastics. Okay, just to remind us, and PHA, what sort of applications are we looking at in the packaging space? So PHAs can be used for all sorts of applications. You might need some additives or add something else to tweak the polymer a little bit, but you can use it for extruded products, for food packaging, electronic casings. You can even use it for paperboard coatings. Oh, right. So it's rigid as well as, as flexible, then? Right. PHAs have a wide range of um, mechanical characteristics. Okay. How, how this, uh, this process, uh, is anybody else doing this with methane? So people are looking at methane for different uses. Uh, the key use for methane, waste methane anyway, is generally electricity. In terms of producing PHAs from methane, there are a slew of other small academic labs around the world who have been looking at it. Um, but what we're very focused on is scaling up the production of methane to the biodegradable plastic PHA. Right, and that's actually preempts my next question because um, it isn't commercialized yet, I presume. Um, I mean, how will you go to that process? Um, and uh, Yes, I mean, how will it be commercialized? Are you looking for a partner? We're always looking for partners. Okay. <laughs> We're in the middle of the valley of death, as right. you say. Um, yes. We've been really fortunate to have great funding partners to date through strategic partners mm. and different grants and, and business plan competitions that have really helped us leverage um, infrastructure and the funding that we have. We are always looking for partners, whether it's in the AD, the anaerobic digestion space, mm. or uh, commercial partners to help build our, our first larger scale commercial facility. Something that occurred to me with this, um, and to go back to your, your very memorable phrase that where there's people there's methane. Um, I mean, I, I could almost see a lot of small scale uh, production units springing up. I, we, would you license this process or what? Uh, licensing would be an avenue. It depends on the, the partners and the different financing mechanisms we use. But yeah, a licensing model is definitely a possibility. Um, design, build, own, operate is one as well. So that's something we're exploring as we scale up. And, and yes, we envision a decentralized model. Um, which will require you know, some capital uh, investment to, to see that to fruition. But I, I think what, what appeals to me is that it, it could be produced locally. I, I mean, we talked about arable land sort of by the by, but I mean, I think everybody knows that big producer of methane is cattle, for example. So could this be some sort of adjunct to farming, uh, a farming operation? For sure. And that would be a really you know, exciting vision for the future. You have your dairy cattle, you collect their methane, uh, their manure, use that methane for something that's used in the dairy sector. Maybe that even goes back and is digested on site where you produce more methane. You have this complete closed loop cycle. Okay, the, the process is proven. Uh, you know it can be done. Um, it clearly requires funding to be commercialized. What sort of timeline are we talking about? 
<laughs> that's a quick, tricky question. Um, so we're scaling up as we speak. We'll know a lot, and every month that goes by, we know more and more about how our process scales. That's what's really key right now. We've been scaling significantly over the past two, three, four years. And every couple months that go on, and we've validated this at a larger scale, validated more of the downstream processing, we feel better and better about, and more and more excited about how this can scale. Um, a year from now, we really hope to have fir firm plans for our first first commercial plant. Okay, we've seen some fairly assertive um, claims on pricing from another potential uh, PHA producer, but from a land crop. Um, and I'm not going to I'm not going to sort of cite that kind of pricing. But but do you see yourself in that kind of ballpark? Is that achievable with your process? Yeah, um, definitely. I. I I don't know the details of their process, no. but yes, ours should be at that price point as well. That's actually where we are right now at the scale we're at. The key is being able to produce that at the full commercial scale. So we've got the possibility, the very real possibility of a, of a methane sourced feedstock uh, that will give us commercially viable biodegradable commodity plastics alternatives, yes? Yes, correct. Okay, you heard it here first. Thank you, Dr. Morse. <laughs> Thank you.